The arrangement of the Qur'an is one of many reasons why Muslims believe that it could only have come from God. In fact, modern research has discovered a remarkable structure in the Qur'an known as ring composition. To demonstrate this, let's analyze the second chapter of the Qur'an known as Al-Baqarah, the cow. This chapter consists of a total of 286 verses. The entire chapter can be divided into nine groups based on theme. The first group of verses talk about faith and unbelief. This mirrors the theme of the last group of verses. The second group covers God's creation and knowledge. This again mirrors the second to the last group's theme. The third group discusses the law given to the Israelites, which mirrors the giving of law to the Muslims in the seventh group. The fourth group relates to the test of Abraham, a mirror of the test of Muslims in the sixth group. The middle group, the fifth group, is the central theme of the entire chapter, the change in direction of the Muslim prayer. We have made you believers a middle nation, so that you may bear witness to the truth before others. We only made the direction the one you used to face in order to distinguish those who follow the messenger from those who turn on their heels. This turning point was the change in direction of the daily prayers from Jerusalem to Mecca, which represented a big test for the believers. We find the mention of this important turning point in exactly the middle of the chapter, the 143rd verse. Moreover, this verse even contains the word middle. Together these nine groups form a giant ring composition. As you can see, ring composition is structured as a sort of circle, with the central meaning placed at the center. You can think of it in terms of a mirror. So ring composition is the equivalent of putting a mirror in the middle. What is mentioned in the first half will be reflected in the second half. Things can be taken a step further. If we examine these nine groups, we find that they each contain sub-ring compositions. So what we have is rings within rings. For example, here is the eighth group with the theme of God's creation and knowledge. We can see that the beginning and the end both have the themes of giving and charity, and the central theme of God's power and knowledge is placed in the middle. Things can be taken further still. This sub-ring contains yet another ring within itself. This is the 255th verse known as Ayat al-Kursi, the verse of the throne. Just like the chapter which contains it, the verse of the throne can be divided into nine groups based on theme. The first and ninth parts each mention God's personal names. The second and eighth parts both state that God never tires. The third and seventh parts describe that God owns everything in the heavens and the earth. The fourth and sixth parts make it clear that God has total control over us and we are dependent on Him. Notice that the middle of this verse mentions before and after, which could be yet another allusion to the mirroring of ring composition. It's worth highlighting that not only does the verse of the throne contain its own ring composition, but it is also positioned as a subring within two larger rings, a concentric ring composition. We can see that this chapter of the Qur'an is marvelously designed, being precisely and tightly arranged according to the principles of ring composition. This precision in arrangement is in fact astonishing when we consider the timing of the revelation of these verses. To appreciate this, let's consider the analogy of building construction. Imagine you had the task of building a house. Rather than waiting until you receive all of the materials and then drawing up a carefully thought out design plan, you instead decide to proceed without complete knowledge of the constituent parts, constructing it piecemeal, adding to it bit by bit as and when you receive the individual materials. What are the chances that this approach will result in a well-constructed house? Unlike an organized approach where each part is placed in its best possible position according to a design plan, Instead, you have a situation where it seems each part is placed arbitrarily, depending on the order in which the parts were received. In such circumstances, you would most likely end up with a very poorly designed house, liable to collapse at any time. It is highly unlikely, perhaps even impossible, that this disorganized approach would end up with the same stunningly designed house as an organized approach. Yet this is exactly what we find with the Qur'an structure. 
The builder in our example is the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. The house that he began to build since its first verses were revealed to him is the Quran. The rooms and bricks in our construction example are its chapters and verses. He can never have a design plan in place for the Quran because the revelation of many of its verses depended on events that were out of his control, such as the social developments and challenges that he faced throughout his prophethood. For example, believers would come up to him and question him on a particular matter, or his enemies would challenge him. The responses in the form of revelation would then descend on him, addressing the specific situation that he was facing. How could Muhammad have devised such an intricate plan when he could not predict the events that would dictate the revelation of verses? Such an arrangement would have to be planned in advance, but this was not possible due to these events being out of his control. What this demonstrates is that the author was someone who could predict the future. Possessing knowledge of the unseen is a quality of God, not human beings.